morning. My name's Nick Shimon. I'm the uh, agronomist for Georgia and Florida for Monsanto covering uh, Delta Pine cotton, uh, DeKalb corn, ash grow soybeans. We'll be focusing on cotton today. Um, new varieties that we'll be releasing for 2014 and then uh, a brief mention of uh, our current varieties. I'm sure a lot of y'all are familiar with them. Um, our top three being 1137, 1252, and 1050. All the uh, Roundup Flex, Bolgard 2 technology. Uh, we've done uh, very well in the UGA on-farm trials the last several years. Uh, we've kind of kept, uh, maintained the top three spots in those with those three varieties and uh, we saw that again this past year. And uh, with that, it makes it hard moving forward with new varieties um, for this year. So we ended up with one variety this year is what I'll be talking about and focusing mainly on the root knot nematode resistance. So the variety that will be released this year is uh, Delta Pine. 1454 NR B2RF. The NR is, uh, is put in there just to denote nematode resistance in this variety as opposed to our other varieties that we currently offer. Uh, this past year it was tested as 13R 347. Uh, you may have seen that in some of the UGA trials or some of our internal Monsanto trials. If you knew somebody that was doing one, it would have been listed as the uh, 13R 347. And um, this one is uh, what Delta Pine is calling root knot nematode resistant. Um, due to the reduction of nematodes in the soil profile once you plant the crop. So the concept when they came up with this is it's a breeding trait. Uh, we, we had to have a yield parity with our current, current varieties or varieties in the marketplace. If you plant it on non-nematode ground, we wanted to make sure that it was going to yield the same as those other varieties. And then if you put it in a nematode, high nematode population, that it's going to yield better than those varieties. So that fields as we know with nematodes are usually spots in the field you have hot spots we want this variety to do well in those hot spots but also do well where there's little nematode pressure it reduces the population and it has a, a yield advantage in the moderate to high nematode levels this is kind of the targeted area um, you can see the southeast uh, in georgia and then in west texas as well um, annual yield losses 120 million in the u.s um, due to root knot nematode pressure. And then also with the phasing out of Timic, this is where a lot of the root knot stuff, uh, is, you're, you're going to see more of it in the marketplace. So just an example of the stunning scene in the field, a lot of, lot of y'all are familiar with that, and then the galling on the roots on susceptible varieties. So the host resistance terminology um, that, that we use in Delta Pine is susceptible, you'll see the galling resistant, you're going to see less galling. It's not immune, as that was mentioned before. It, it's not immune to root knot nematode, but it shows resistance in that you see much less galling and a reduction in nematodes in the soil. Just the life cycle of the nematodes, um, the root knot nematode that we see in the, uh, in the southeast, every 25 to 28 days, uh, the life cycle. So for the 1454 NRB2RF, um, a basic description of the plant. So it's a full maturity. For Delta Pine, we use the uh, first two numbers or the year it's released, and then the last two numbers are a, a kind of a relative maturity. The, the higher the number, the fuller season. So this is kind of comparable to 1252 as far as the maturity goes and what you're familiar with with a plant. Tall plant height, best fit's going to be the southeast uh, for us. That's why it's being launched here and in West Texas only. Uh, it will require PGR management. Uh, it can be a very aggressively growing plant as we saw this past year on dry land or irrigated with the amount of water that we had. This, this plant was very aggressive. This is a comparison of the 1454 to 1252, which is a standard that uh, many growers are familiar with. A lot of the stuff to take away from this is it's very similar in the numbers you'll see for plant height, total nodes. So the plant structure that you're going to see with it if you grow this crop is going to be very similar to what you're used to seeing with 1252 if that's uh, one of the crops, that, that you, one of the varieties that you've grown before. So for a comparison to uh, root knot nematode tolerant uh, varieties that are in the marketplace, 367 was used here. This is uh, this line here shows significant, so we'll look at yield as the first one. Uh, we saw a significant difference in yield over the uh, current root knot varieties that are in the marketplace. 
Uh, another susceptible or um, root knot tolerant variety that, that we used was 5458. And here we saw a slight bump in yield, but really no stati statistical difference. So it's, it's on par with what's in the marketplace right now. For the Delta Pine varieties, we use 1050 as one of our common checks. And as you can see, a slight reduction in yield from 1050, but there's no significance in it. So essentially it's on par with what we're seeing with 1050 in our internal trials. But when we move into a high infestation of, of root knot nematode, this is where the 1454 really stands out. Um, this is the seed treatment, but uh, as you'll see the varieties here, and then as we move down, this is uh, sorted in yield. So as we move down, you'll see the statistical difference as they separate, so 1454 being at the top, and as you get down into the other root knot varieties, they start to separate statistically from the uh, 1454. And this is on yield, so this is what, what we're judging a lot of our data off of is that it's going to yield the same or better in those root knot high infestations. But it's also going to decrease the number of nematodes in the soil profile. So the susceptible check, you can see here, this is sorted from highest to lowest uh, number of nematodes in the soil. The susceptible check was right around 1,000 and then down here is the 1454, and there's a statistical difference. Um, with our, our other root knot varieties that we tested it with, uh, it separates statistically from one on the number of nematodes, but here with 367, it didn't separate statistically, but where it did separate for us in our trials was on the yield. So, so this is our, our main judge's yield, but we also get the benefit of reducing the number of nematodes in the soil profile. Another graph trying to show you what we're working with as far as uh, susceptible checks versus the other root knot tolerant varieties. So in a, in a low environment, we want it to yield close to the same, that yield parity that we see with the susceptible checks. And that's what we get with the, uh, with the root knot nematode variety, the dark green being the delta pine nematode and the competitor checks being the, the light green. If you go to a high root knot, um, environment, you'll see that you get a 15% yield advantage from our susceptible checks, with 100% being the susceptible checks, and then uh, we get a slight 12% yield advantage over other root knot tolerant checks. So we have the root knot resistance, but we also have the yield advantage as well. So again, just a, a brief description of the, of the crop as you're going to see it. There'll be uh, limited seed supply. Each sales rep for uh, Delta Pine will have some. So I encourage you to try to get some if you have high infestations of root knot nematodes or you know you can put it on a field that has a lot of nematode pressure. That's really where it's going to shine. Um, putting it on, on your other better ground, I, I think it'll do as well. You should see that yield parity with your other crops, but there's a lot of other varieties that we have that do well on that, uh, on that better ground already. So if we have any questions on that, I'll briefly talk about our uh, up, up and coming technologies. Will be the uh, Extend technology, our dicamba resistance, um, pending regulatory <laughs> approval. Um, that's always kind of a tricky thing. We're looking at a launch in 2015. And um, that'll be cotton and soybeans. The cotton will be um, dicamba tolerant, glufosinate, and Roundup tolerant. Uh, you'll have all three genes in that, as well as the, uh, the Bolgard too. And uh, that'll be launched in some current varieties that you're familiar with or similar varieties like 1252, 1137, those type varieties is what you'll see in that Extend technology uh, in 2015. Probably, depending on seed supply, probably be like a limited launch in 2015, also pending regulatory approval. And then as the years go, that's, uh, we'll be shifting into the dicamba tolerant technology. And with that, if you have any questions on the root knot or the dicamba, I'd be glad to field those. Thank you.